So a few weeks ago, I made a video on a hack for the analog pocket. It was a sort of workaround. It allowed you to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games off of the micro SD card. No cartridge needed. It wasn't exactly new, but it was new to me. It was very easy to set up, but it didn't work for every game, Whoa. just some of the more popular ones. It was basically a library of games that the community converted into GB Studio files. Well, anyway, I jumped the gun on saying that the Analog Pocket had been hacked because now the Analog Pocket has actually been hacked. Hacked more, and for real this time. Last Friday, Analog surprised everyone and released their open FPGA update for the Analog Pocket. The device has two FPGA chips. One of them is what allows you to run Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games from the cartridge. The second one has been completely locked away, unusable until right now. Upon this release, Analog also released a core for the game Space War, which is the first video game that was ever created. This is like a cool little novelty, a fun little thing that Analog did. The game Space War is horrible. It's a terrible game. Just four hours after Analog announced their update, a Reddit user named Spiritualized1997 released Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced cores for that second FPGA chip. This Reddit user had just made their account that day, they had just made a GitHub account that day, and they also claimed to have been testing these cores for months even though this update had just dropped that day. It's analog. It's analog in disguise. They probably just took the cores that they already had on the original FPGA chip and put them out into the world so that everybody can just put them on the open FPGA chip so that we can all put ROMs on this thing because they know that all we want to do is just put ROMs on here. They know that people like me are going to make videos about it and they know that it's going to make some of the rest of you want one even more. This fixes the one thing that kind of ruined the analog pocket for me. Yeah, it's cool to have hardware emulation, but software emulation is like 99% good enough for me most of the time anyway. The Pocket is a beautiful, well-designed device. It's just much more convenient for me to take a handheld emulator with me. Something that has all of my games on there already. No need for physical cartridges. Well now, with a simple update and some drag and drop files, all of my Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, and their save files, are on here. No cartridge needed. And they all play fantastic. It's one step further away from that hardware emulation a lot of us bought this thing for, but that doesn't really matter, does it? This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Hey, what's up? Oh, hey. What are you eating? Some loopy puffs and a cereal bar. Ew. You know what this is? What? This is Magic Spoon. It tastes like that stuff, but it's got zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving. Wow. And these cereal bars, are only one gram of sugar, 10 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs, and only 130 calories per bar. That's 140 calories per serving. You, wow, you did all that. That was crazy, right? They're also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and low carb. Uh huh, I'm listening. I dropped one right here. They got flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and my favorite right here, maple waffle. Yeah, I bet. You can build your variety box of Magic Spoon if you want to try some flavors for yourself over at the link in the description below. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash wolfden and use the promo code wolfden for a whole $5 off. Wow, good boy. Isn't that crazy? It also ships anywhere in the US and now even Canada and the UK. <laughs> I hear you, man. I know, right? And they're so confident in their product that it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll just give you all of your money back, no questions asked. So why don't you give it a try for yourself over at magicspoon.com slash wolfden. Type it in there. No, really? Sorry. Come on. Are you even listening? What are you drawing? Oh, uh, just, just you be annoying. And yeah, you know what? That's accurate. Yeah, I thought so. 
You know, Analog has been getting a lot of shit recently because of their marketing. They say no emulation. And I kind of fell for that trap. It is emulation, it's just hardware emulation. And hardware emulation has come a long way than what it's been many years ago. You got stuff like the Mister, which is doing a fantastic job with FPGA. What makes this thing so unique and interesting is the UX behind the whole thing. What made it a pain in the ass is that it wasn't open to ROMs and stuff. And now it is. So I like it a lot more now. And of course they're gonna go heavy with the marketing. They, they wanna sell them. And they, they did a good job making like mainstream audiences want one of these things. In order to do this hack or mod or whatever you wanna call it, first you need to download the update from Analog themselves. You download that and you just put that file in the root folder of a micro SD card. So just naked folderless on a micro SD card. Then you turn the whole device off, pop that micro SD card in and then turn the device on and it'll just automatically start the update. And it's very quick. Hello? Hello? There we go. This update also adds the much anticipated memories feature. Now you can have up to 128 save states across all of your physical cartridges, as well as 128 save states per OpenFPGA core. So if you're using this new cartridgeless hack and you wanna use some save states, let's say you're going between a save file of, I don't know, Pokemon Ruby, and uh, Mega Man Zero, you'll have 128 save states across both of those games, because it'll be all the Game Boy Advance core. But then you wanna do a save state for Wario Land 3, you're gonna get an additional 128 because now this is a new core. I'm holding the cartridges, this is probably getting very confusing because this is if you're not using cartridges. If you're using cartridges, you get 128 across all the cartridges. But if you're using ROMs, you get 128 per core. If you try to load one memory from a game that you don't have playing, it uh, it just fails. I think 128 save states is more than enough for most people. Of course I knew that save states are helpful, but I didn't realize how useful they'd be for like a game that has a dead battery save. If you have like a 25 year old Pokemon game that you never changed the battery on, you can just use the save states instead of changing the battery out. These save states do not work on flash carts like in EverDrive or this easy flash thing that I have, but you can just abandon these now because with this mod, you can just put all of the games on the micro SD card for the analog itself. You don't need a cart at all. This update also adds a library feature, but it's just a fraction of what they've previously promised. It just kind of shows you some brief details of a game cartridge right before you play it, which is pretty cool if you'd like to bring your analog pocket to a flea market and check for some fake games or something. I was never too excited about this library feature anyway. Just seems like kind of a throwaway thing. Analog has a short tutorial on how to get Space War on the open FPGA chip on here. It's kind of worth doing for the novelty and also because it shows you how that open FPGA core works and how to get the cores on there. But you probably just want to get right to the good stuff, don't you? You can check out the Reddit post by Spiritualized1997. There's a link to a GitHub, which has a download link, and you can just take those folders that are in there and kind of merge them with the folders on your Pockets micro SD card. It's the easiest mod in the world, much like every other analog product. It just took much longer than anticipated to come out. The only thing this package doesn't come with is a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Color BIOS file, which would be a little illegal if they included that in this package. But you can easily find it by just Googling GBA BIOS file and like clicking the first link that you see. Good luck navigating the minefield of download links. The only thing that wasn't immediately clear to me was where do the games go? They can really just go wherever you want, but for the easiest time, you want to put them in the common folder, and I put them in a folder called ROMs inside of that common folder. Save files go into saves, and then the system you want, like Game Boy Advance, and then if you created a ROMs folder, they'll be in another ROMs folder, and that's where the save files go. This is where you can import your saves from a different emulator. I did this for my Mega Man Zero save because it's been like two years and I still haven't beaten it. But for some reason, some emulators will create a save file that's too big for a Game Boy Advance. They should be like 32 kilobytes, not 64. 
So you can just open it if you want in a text editor and delete all these unnecessary bits. And there you go. The same save you've previously been playing across all your devices. Unfortunately, this hack does not allow you to rip saves off of a cartridge. That would be really cool and something I hope we see in the future. For now, you'll need a GB operator or something equivalent for that. Using the open FPGA cores is almost no different than just plugging in a cartridge. From the menu, you go to open FPGA, click the core you want and select your game. It loads and plays exactly like it would have in a cartridge slot. The analog pocket is touted for its hardware emulation. This mod kind of skirts the line a little bit, but I don't think there's any performance differences whatsoever. At least I haven't noticed any, even with some of the games that would normally be harder to emulate. I mean, it's probably just using the same cores from the other FPGA chips, so this really shouldn't be much of a surprise. I will say, one weird little quirk, it's significantly quieter when you're playing it through the micro SD card instead of just playing it from a cartridge or even the easy flash thing. Playing it off the cartridge is so much louder for some reason. Another thing that might be disappointing for some people is you can't change the filter modes on these cores, at least not yet. You're just stuck with the default analog OS one, which is like the pixel perfect one, so you can't get scan lines and stuff, which is fine. I don't usually like that stuff anyway. But this is brand new. This update had only just released, so community developers haven't really gotten a chance to port over cores or create their own cores for this thing. The only other core besides these that I've seen is Neo Geo. I'm sure that we'll see more cores pop up very soon. The analog pocket is made for like Game Boy Advance and under, but it's a very powerful device. I think we'll definitely see some NES or SNES cores pop up soon. And I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility to expect things as powerful as even a PlayStation 1 on here. If you'd like to stay updated on whatever the community creates for this thing, you can head over to the Analog Inc. subreddit and check that out every once in a while. But there's also a few web pages that will constantly update with new cores for this thing, and I'll link one of those in the description below. You can even just go right there and download the cores if you don't want to faff about in GitHub. I don't intend to make a new video every time they release a core for this thing. Maybe I'll talk about it on Twitter or something, but I'll probably just wait for a bunch of cores to be added to this thing before I make a new video on it. There's only so many times I can say the analog pocket has been hacked before you guys stop clicking on the video. Anyway, what do you guys think about this new update for the analog pocket? Does this make you more interested in this device? Does this give you more FOMO? Because I know it was like very limited and some of you guys probably aren't getting yours until sometime next year. And if this makes you want one, you're probably not getting one for a really long time. The chip shortage is starting to slow down. I know that S Valve said that Steam decks are gonna start rolling out a little quicker now. Hopefully Analog can fix their <laughs> too. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, and any all of this other social media garbage. This new update helps a lot, and I still love this thing, but I don't know, man. I've been having a lot of fun with that hacked 3DS that I have. Maybe a hacked Vita will be coming soon. Anyway, we got new videos here all the time. Make sure you subscribe to see those because YouTube isn't gonna tell you when I release all of them unless you subscribe and have that bell on. And if you'd like to, you can also share this video with a friend, a friend who has an analog pocket and maybe hasn't seen this news yet and would like to try it out. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good week. Oh my God, this game's so fast.